With its rotating cutting wheel, the tunneling machine breaks the material from the tunnel face. The material is then transferred to the belt conveyor system in the rear of the shield via a screw conveyor, while the hydraulic cylinders press the machine forward continuously. The reinforced concrete segments, known as lining segments, are installed under the protection of the shield skin. When the ring building has been completed, the machine can push itself against the new tunnel ring and drill further into the soil. The 83-meter-long backup accommodates all logistic facilities necessary for the operation of the overall system. The working method of an EPB shield is basically made up of two phases, the tunneling phase and the ring building phase. During the tunneling phase, the cutting wheel, which rotates at a speed of up to 2.7 revolutions per minute, is pressed against the tunnel face with a pressure of up to 400 bar by means of hydraulic cylinders. 24 hydraulic motors drive the cutting wheel via a gear rim, developing a drilling torque of up to 38,000 kilonewton meters. Under this high pressure, the disc cutters and cutting knives made of high strength steel loosen the material at the tunnel face. If necessary, the soil can be conditioned with water, bentonite, or foam using the injection systems located on the backup. With the help of nozzles integrated into the cutting wheel, the corresponding conditioning medium is injected into the soil, which is pressed into the excavation chamber by the existing earth and groundwater pressure. For shield tunneling in non-stable soils, a loss in stability at the tunnel face is compensated by creating a support pressure. In the case of the earth pressure balance shield, the soil which was excavated by the cutting wheel is used to support the tunnel face. In order to reach a state of equilibrium, the support pressure is transferred by the hydraulic cylinders via the bulkhead to the soil, which avoids an uncontrolled penetration. The soil prepared in this way can now be transported from the invert area of the excavation chamber to a belt conveyor by a screw conveyor. The screw conveyor is driven by two hydraulic motors which have a power of up to 400 kilowatts. The quality of the soil taken from the excavation chamber is regulated by the screw conveyor's rotational speed, which is matched to the advance speed. The aim is to maintain a state of equilibrium between the quantity of soil removed by the screw conveyor and the quantity of soil accumulated from the shield's tunneling process. This guarantees optimum support for the tunnel face. The system must be able to react flexibly to the permanently changing geological conditions. Therefore, the current state is continuously controlled with the help of pressure sensors by measuring the cutting wheel torque and the screw conveyor torque and by monitoring the excavated material. When the tunneling phase is completed, cutting wheel and screw conveyor are stopped. Now the ring building phase starts in the shield area under atmospheric pressure conditions. A complete tunnel ring consists of several segments, called lining segments. These prefabricated reinforced concrete elements are produced with millimeter precision in a factory which is especially installed above ground for this purpose. Following quality control, they are then transported into the tunnel by mine cars. In the front section of the backup, the lining segments are lifted individually by a special transfer crane. It lifts them onto the segment feeder which transports the elements to the front of the tunnel. Here, the heavy ring segments are picked up and positioned by a hydraulically controlled crane arm, called the erector, using vacuum plates. The erector is installed on two rails and can be moved, rotated, and telescoped. Each completed tunnel ring consists of several segments, two lateral elements, and the key segment, which is installed last. 
The positioning of the segments always follows the same routine. The erector lifts the stone from the segment feeder. The hydraulic cylinders are then retracted from the corresponding installation point. The segment is positioned precisely, holding site contact next to the previous installed ring, using a remote control. Now the hydraulic cylinders are extended again to secure the segment in its position and to subsequently bolt it into the previous ring. During this process, machine and tunneling personnel are protected by the shield skin against the earth pressure and any possible groundwater. In this way, the lining segments are installed on each side alternately. The key segment, with its tapered sides, is slotted into position last and distributes the loads in the ring, completing the ring building. Subsequently, the next tunneling phase can start. The end of the shield, the so-called tail skin, is equipped with a circular tail skin sealing. This provides a seal between the sealed structure of the shield machine and the segment ring.